Cap. How are you feeling? Me? I'm feeling fine. No Weber plane tomorrow? Yes, I know. Prairie City. Well, I thought maybe you might not want to face them up there. So I'll put another act in your place and you sort of take it easy, huh? That's not necessary, Cap. It's been five years. They've probably forgotten about it anyway. You've got something else on your mind, haven't you? It's about your father, Betty. What about him? He's broken jail. Did, did they get him? No, he's still out. Happened about a week ago. I read it in the Prairie City paper. I'm sorry, darling, but you have to know it sometime. I'm sorry, too. You should have done it, Cap. Well, there's no use worrying about that now. But you see what I meant when I said about taking the day off tomorrow? Might be a little embarrassing. Embarrassing? Why should it be? Well, the lab will have a little hard feeling about you up there, on account of your father, I mean. And I just sort of figured That's that... That's all the more reason I should face them, Cap. We've got nothing to be ashamed of. You think I'd let you down? Well, as a matter of fact, Betty, what you're doing is exactly what I expected you to do. Now, you go hit the hay, old trooper. Yes, sir. You look worried. Maybe I am. Have you ever been in Prairie City? No, this is my first trip. You're going to have to show me around. I sort of dread strange places. I think I know what you mean. I dread it, too. But I thought you knew the place. That's just the trouble. I do. City. Maybe two or three hours. It's going to be awful hard getting on board until after dark, Mr. Wetson. The night will be all right. I'll give you a note. Be sure Betty gets it. But don't let anybody see you give it to her. Understand? Get your tickets here for the greatest show that ever hit Prairie City. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Get your tickets here. Yeah, Prairie Lab Post, get your tickets here for the greatest show that ever hit Prairie City. It's just about to start, folks. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Get your tickets here. Just a minute, gentlemen. Get your tickets here. Official business. Take over, Lou. All right, Cap. All right, folks. Step right up and get your You seen anything? Not yet, Sheriff. I know everybody's come aboard so far. I still don't think he'd risk coming up here. It's a sucker move. Weston's no sucker. He's sharp. He figures he'll be safer in the crowd than trying to make it alone. I know that guy. Well, keep your eyes open, boys. All right, sir. Step right along, please. There's plenty of tickets and plenty of room. Thank you, sir. All right, lady, how many?
Here's the yellow rose in Texas I'm going there to see No other fella knows her No other, only me She cried so when I left her It broke her loving heart And if we ever meet again We'll never, never part She's the rose of rarest beauty This fellow ever knew Her eyes are bright as diamonds They sparkle like the dew You may sing of other pretty gals From Maine to Tennessee But the yellow rose of Texas Is the only rose for me There's a cowboy back in Texas Who said he would be true I knew you were from Texas Please tell me how you knew The way you smile reminds me Of the one I used to know There's a many a rose in Texas If you're looking where they grow There's a cowboy back in Texas Well, he's really just a friend He lives down by the Rio Where the river makes a bend Well, you know my rose of Texas Lives across on the other shore So as long as they're together We won't see them anymore He's the rose of rarest beauty How do you do, Sheriff? You wanted to see me? I'd like to ask you a few questions. When did you hear from your father last? Well, about a month ago, he wrote me a letter. But I think I know what you want me to say. But, uh, you tell us. That I know where he is. I'm sorry, Sheriff, but he didn't let me in on his plans. Uh, you were figuring on seeing him, weren't you? Absolutely not. There's no particular reason you should tell us if you did know. In that case, Sheriff, why do you bother to ask? Just a minute, young lady. If you know what's good for you, if you want to save yourself in trouble, you talk. And talk fast. Simmer down, mister. You're getting out of line fast. You too, cowboy. Suppose you mind your own affairs. How do you know this isn't my affair? Please, Roy. I can handle it. Oh, that's an idea. Uh, beat it. Do you mind? I'd like to talk to the Sheriff alone. You better stay here, boss. Long distance, please. I'd like to place a call to Mr. John Ellis, National Insurance Company in Dallas. Hello, Roy. How are you doing? Did you contact the girl? Yes, sir. I got a job on the showboat as an entertainer. I have a hunch she doesn't know anything about the missing money, though. Well, I hope your hunch is wrong, Roy. But handle it your own way. Stick close to her. I still say that she and her father will try to get together. Right. Hurry, mister. I could be. Why? Nothing. Only it might be a good idea. As a matter of fact, I make a you leave town right away. And I second it. You wouldn't want to get that nice shirt all dirty. It's too pretty. Well, I'm glad you like it. But don't worry about it getting dirty. I have to take things to the cleaners every once in a while. I like your scarf, too. That's a little uneven. Hey, Bouncer! Bouncer! Back down! Throw these fellas out of here. With pleasure, boss. 
Roy! Buster! You old son of a gun. How you been? Well, how you been? I said throw him out. You mean Roy, Mr. Gorse? I can't do that. He's my pal. I haven't seen him in years. What's that got to do with it? You're fired. Two more minutes, please. They've been keeping you busy? Sure, on the move every minute. Take us, heal a bend, a rodeo or two, round them. All you usual, Top of Buster. It's a great life. Sure is. Just a minute. Yes. Hey! What? Hey! 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 Nice of you fellas pitching in and helping me like that. Uh, oh, no trouble at all. We couldn't stand by and see one fella ganged up on like that. Oh, no say, I guess we better go in and see if the boss is back yet, huh? Yeah, about our job. Job? Sure. Yeah, they sent for us to play and sing in here. Oh, musicians, huh? <laughs> you fellas ain't got any job. That was the boss Roy and I slugged. Oh, that's we all forget about What do we do now? <laughs> well, we might as well hightail it back over the ridge where we came from. Hey, maybe Roy can get you a job in a showboat. How about it, Roy? All of them? Why yeah, sure. well, we're here. Yeah, well, well, wait a minute, fellas. I don't own the boat. I'd like to. Oh, only... come on, Roy. We can't let them down. Where's your instruments? Why, at the express office where we ship them, I guess. Well, come on, let's go. Wait a minute. Where's Shub? Shub? Yeah. Say, so you don't suppose he... Hey! Oh, boy! Hey, that's hey, him. Hey, get him out of there. Get it off him. Hey. Him. Bob, help me here. Somebody get that out of there. We came after our instruments. Yeah, that'll be 480. Pay him, Shug. Pay him, Shug. Our banker. Pay him. Don't beat yourself to death. Hey, now, wait a minute. Don't tell me you lost all our dough in that fight. I sure did. It's gone. Still 480. That's all right, fellas. I'll stick it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> remember, now, this, this is just a loan. We'll pay you back. OK, pick him up, boys. your instruments out and playing us a tune. We want to see how good you are. You mean right here? Sure. Well, all right, boy. I'm coming. Home. I've been away, but there'll come a day, so darling, don't you cry. I'm coming. Here comes your rover coming home. I'm coming. Howdy, Cap. Hey, what sort of a fish do you call this? Pretty good, huh? Ooh. Mm. Mm. Back to the open range and rope and one little gal I knew. Back to the wave and sage and save and all my love for you. Open the so, folks, just another attraction of the showboat Yellow Rose of Texas. Huh, Cap? Oh, yes, yes, <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> I'm coming home. I've got a yearning, home fire's burning. Darling, don't you cry. I'm coming Here comes your rover coming home. I'm coming home. I see the light of your eyes so bright, and I see a clear blue sky. I'm coming Here comes your rover coming home. I'm coming 
Out of a storm cloud into a warm cloud, climbing each step to you. I'm coming. Watching the rainbow down by the lane glow, climbing to heaven too. I'm coming. One little mile more saves me a smile, boy. You two kids better top this number. Those boys are plenty all right, and I know talent's gonna see it. You certainly do, Cap. I'm coming. Here comes your roll that come and I'll get him for you if you like. No, don't bother. Billy, Roy, they want an encore. Well, what's the matter, now? Cap, I can't go on now. Roy, will you excuse us a minute? I want to talk to Cap. Uh, Roy, send on the next number, will you? All right. What? Just going to. Well, never mind. Come on. Sure has grown up. Dad, are you all right? Don't worry about me. Drop it, Wesley. This is quite a surprise, Betty. But not a pleasant one. Who is he? A policeman. Next time, I'll be more careful making friends. I suppose you think I planned all this. It doesn't matter much now, does it? Ready, Weston? Take the gun, Betty. Now get around there, mister. And keep your hands up. That's all, brother. Drop it. You dropped your gun, mister. Why, you little squirt. your wagon, mister. Shall we get started? No, you're making a mistake. Oh, I don't think so. He's the one who made the mistake, breaking jail and before that stealing a payroll. But he didn't steal it. You don't believe that, do you? Why should I? Ah, uh, wait for time, Betty. All this guy is interested in is collecting the reward. Say, you're not a regular copper, are you? No, I'm from the insurance company, but I still have to uphold the law. And after that, I'll expect you to tell me what you did with the money. Which I haven't gotten, which I never saw. All Dad wants is to prove his innocence. They framed him. Honestly, they did. Well, that's not for me to judge. Well, at least you can listen, Roy. It can't do any harm. Young fella, we're both looking for the same thing, only for different reasons. If you turn me in, you lose the money, and I lose the last chance to clear myself. And if I listen to your story, what happens then? You might change your mind and give us both a break. Your game? All right, Buster. Put down the gun. Make yourself comfortable, Weston. And make the story good. Go ahead. 
Thank you, Mark. Well, it all started five years ago, right here in Prairie City. Betty and I were strangers. Our idea was to buy a ranch, but needing a little money, I got a job driving for the express company. It was my first night on the job. We had to run a payroll shipment up to the Hollister mine. The express agent sealed the box and turned it over to me and the regular driver, a chap named Charlie Goss. He owns the Club Ace here now. Between us, we carried the box out to the buckboard. Being new on the job, I suggested Goss drive and let me ride guard behind. But for some reason or other, he didn't like the idea. I ain't supposed to. Your job was to drive. So we change places. What's the difference? Well, none. I mean, I hired out as guard. Well, you know the road, Goss. I don't. It'll save time. All right, but stick close. It was rough going right from the start. I was running about 20 feet behind the wagon when it happened. Goss fell to the ground unconscious. from under me, the wagon gone with the payroll, and Charlie Goss slugged in the back. Right after that, the sheriff picked me up. Yeah, they gave me a trial all right, but when Goss testified that I shot him and said I insisted on riding behind, the jury lost no time in hanging the blame on me. Now I'll tell you who I think did it. I'm way ahead of you, Weston. You think Goss had a hand in it, don't you? Well, who else? I'll admit he didn't rig it right or he wouldn't have got shot himself. That slug was intended for me. Somebody was working with him, but that somebody got his signals mixed. They counted on killing me, framing it as a holdup, and then splitting up the money later. But I got a hunch it didn't work out that way. Not with Goss shot, and the other fellow gone, and the team running away with the money. What do you think happened to that box, Weston? That's exactly what Dad's been trying to find out, Roy. If he could find that box, it would clear it. Nobody ever found that box. It's around here somewhere. I don't want to give up now, Rogers. I've got to find it. That's a pretty big order, isn't it? Not so big as you think. A couple of weeks ago, Pete here found a piece of the buckboard in the canyon about five miles from the place we were held up. It's true, Roy. Dad wouldn't have broken out of prison if he hadn't had at least a clue. Won't you help us? All I need is 48 hours. Suppose I make you a proposition, Weston. You said I need that box as badly as you do, and you're right. If I help you find it, are you willing to remain in my custody and at the end of 48 hours give yourself up? You mean whether we find it or not? Win or lose. If the posse tracks you down ahead of time, I'll have to surrender you. Take it or leave it. I'll take it. That's a fair proposition, young fella. Then it's settled. We can leave tonight and start looking by morning. I know a few fellows will give us a hand, too. You won't regret it, boy. I hope you're right, Betty. Ain't found a thing. The sheriff's coming. The sheriff? Yeah, he and his men. I had to come across the ridge to get here first. You going to surrender me, Rogers? Well, that was our bargain, but don't jump the gun. We'll see what he wants first. Betty, you better stay here with your father. Come on, Buster. You looking for somebody, Sheriff? Yeah. And don't try to tell me he ain't around here, either. Come on, boys. We'll search this canyon. 
Before you go ahead with this, I'd like to have a few words with you. Don't trust them. They're stalling. It's no use, Buster. Somebody must have tipped them off. What are you covering up for? Where did he go? I can't answer that. We're wasting time. They're all in it together. All right, scatter out, men, and bring him in. He didn't break his word, Roy. So he just couldn't let them catch him now. Where is he? He's going to meet us at Pete's cabin. He promised. Don't you believe that? I don't know what to believe. understand what's happened. Get my horse, will you? Well, it's pretty plain to me what happened. Your dad grabbed the first chance he had to run out on me. I think you're jumping to conclusions. Have you any suggestion? Only that you wait and find out what actually did take place. I think we already know that. Your dad agreed to meet us here. Well, we've waited three hours and he hasn't shown up yet. So you think he let you down? I certainly do. It's at times like these I get awfully lonesome for those hills we were talking about. Remember? All set, Roy. Well, where do you think you're going? I'm checking out, Cap. Oh, now take it easy, Roy. I want to have a little talk with you. Betty told me the whole story. And if you knew that kid like I know her, you wouldn't make such a darn fool of yourself. I'm afraid if anybody made a fool out of me, it was Betty and her dad. I think you're wrong. The point is, I wasn't crazy about having to come here in the first place. It just happened to be my job. Looks like my job's done. You won't change your mind? No. Justice. If you're looking for Weston, he's not here. 
Well, we'll take a look around for ourselves, if you don't mind. Before you do, Sheriff, I'd like to talk to you. About what? Well, it concerns this problem right here. Well, go ahead. I'm listening. This will have to be in private. Keep your eyes open, boys. All right. Does this explain things a little better, Sheriff? Rogers, why the devil didn't you come to me in the first place? As a representative of the insurance company, you ought to cooperate with my office, not jam me up. <laughs> Jamming you up was an accident. I had a hunch, but I was wrong. After listening to Weston's story, I was about convinced he was telling the truth. Him taking those pot shots at me this afternoon ought to convince you otherwise, does it? <laughs> well, let's just say I was following the wrong trail. There's just one thing that puzzles me, Sheriff. How did you know that we had Weston down there in the canyon with us this morning? Got a tip. Somebody tossed this in my window. Hmm. You mind if I keep it? No, help yourself, Rogers. All set, boy. Well, you better get my bag and get car and put them back in my room. We're not leaving after all. Huh? Oh. It's all right, boys. Go ahead. What's the matter, fellas? Something wrong? Now take it easy. Custody, didn't you? That was before you took a shot at the sheriff and ran away. I didn't shoot at the sheriff, Roy. Those shots were meant for me, whether you believe it or not. One of them got me in the arm. I had to make you get away to save my life. If I'd have been doing this, I wouldn't have shot myself, would I? If I wanted to get away, I wouldn't have come back here. Who shot you? Of course, naturally. It couldn't have been him. He was standing not over 20 feet from me when the shots were fired. Are you sure? Of course I'm sure. Well, I don't get it. Neither do I, but I'm going to find out. Wait. Maybe this will help. Here's the slug I dug out of my arm. I'll keep this. Well, what about me? Take it easy. I'll have somebody look after that arm. Betty, if you don't think I'm too much of a heel, I won't apologize for this afternoon. Why? I was wrong about your dad. You better get some bandages and go back to the stall where Trigger is. He's there. Hey, Buster. I got something I want to tell you. Come on. Hey, Buster. See that guy with Goss? Yeah, his name's Ferguson. How long has he been around here? Born here, as far as I know. Hey, you don't think he could have shot Weston? Anybody could have done it. Well, he happens to be on Goss's team, and anybody that's a friend of his is sure no friend of Weston. We've got to figure a way to get a fired slug from his gun. I want to compare it with this one. Well, I told you to stay out of here. Oh, did you? I guess I wasn't listening. Well, you're listening now. Get out of here before you're thrown out. You haven't your gang with you this time. I wouldn't talk rough to him, Mr. Ferguson. He's a gunfighter. Gunfighter, huh? <laughs> well, you two to one, I can outshoot anyone around here. You got a bet, cowboy. Just 20 says you can't. I'll hold the money. I'll take some of that easy money. Here's 10 bucks that says Ferguson can beat you. Oh, <laughs> you're going to be sorry. Now I'll take five. What's the name of the horse? How about that barrel down there? What about the side of the building? I mean the plug. All right with me.
Missed the whole barrel. I'll say you did. That'd be a lesson to you, cowboy. Yes, sir. Now, what was the name of the horse? Bill, I'll get it. No, 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 no. Now you've done it. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Boy, if you ain't a man. <laughs> but I got it. Well. Let's go to the express office. Hi, right, howdy. Hey, that's a swell looking shotgun. Best in the country. Nice balance. Do you do much shooting? Every chance I get. What do you think of these? Mm. Nice looking birds, ain't they, Roy? They sure are. Where'd you get them? Up in the hills. What happened to you? Did you fall in the river? <laughs> what can I do for you fellas? I'd like to ship this box by spray. Sure. National Insurance Company, Dallas, Texas. From Roy Rogers. You work for this outfit, Rogers? That's right, but I don't want it generally known around town, if you don't mind. Don't you worry. Anything that goes through this office is strictly confidential. Hey, uh, maybe you can be of some help to me. My company's still working on that holdup that happened a few years back. Do you know anything about golf? Nothing special. Seems you've done all right financially the past few years. Nobody can tell about where he got the money. From what I hear, people figure that payroll box was never recovered. I don't believe that. Any guy slick enough to stage that holdup is smart enough to follow through and get the dough. Of course, I'm only guessing. <laughs> so are we. Here's your receipt. Thanks. That wagon? Not a bolt or a sliver. Wherever it is, it's sure not in that canyon. This is like looking for a needle in the haystack. We better call it a day. That's two of us with that idea. Yeah, make it three. Hello. Howdy, Pete. You look unlucky. We are, 100%. Say, Pino, that's quite a weapon you got there. A little dangerous, though, isn't it? No, they I'll show you. <laughs> That don't count. Something slipped back. I see. <laughs> Say, was the sheriff still in town when you left? some of them supplies out of that wagon. Okay. Good. And you stay here. Keep out of trouble. Hey, Buster. 
Look down there. Looks like the wreckage of an old wagon. It sure does. Roy, do you suppose that could be the lost wagon? Could be. It could have come this way. Hit the same sharp curve and gone over just like Pete did a few minutes ago. We hit the jackpot. It hasn't been touched yet. Even the seal's unbroken. Let's break it open and see what's inside. Never mind. We'll leave it just like it is. Well, do you want to make sure the money's in there? Not now. I've got a pretty good idea of what's in there. This is neither the time or the place to open it. Come on, we're heading back. I saw a hot one. What's behind all this, Joe? Search me. Sounds interesting, though. Going over to see what it's all about? You might as well. I think it's just a play up to get a bigger crowd at this show. What do you suppose he's trying to pull? I don't know. Somebody said Rogers found that strong box. Hi, Rogers. Howdy. Looks like you stirred up some excitement. Well, I figured the town could use a little. Hey, you mind telling the guy what you got up your sleeve? For a buck, sure. You really gonna spill something up there tonight? Why don't you come out and see the show? I may take you up on that. What does he mean, real culprit? Everybody knows Weston's guilty. Rogers doesn't seem to think so. Well, I think Rogers is crazy. Yeah, crazy as a fox. That stunt's gonna fill the show book a dollar a head. For <laughs> sure. You know the routine? Yeah, I got it. I'm not going to let you down, folks. The strong box which was stolen here five years ago has just been recovered. Acting in the interest of my insurance company, I've taken possession of it. I'll give you my reason for this later. But just to satisfy your curiosity and put the sheriff's mind at ease, I want to announce that the strong box is right here on this stage. After the professor finishes his act, I'm going to ask the sheriff and the committee to come up here and open the box in plain sight. And I believe what we find inside the box will be the surprise I promised you. Search him, Buster. These are, Sheriff? Sure. They're bullets. What of it? I'll explain that in a minute. But before I do, I suggest you arrest this man for stealing the money in the payroll box. Don't listen to him, Sheriff. He's trying to put over a fast one for his company. Can you back up this charge, Rogers? Sure. Open the box. All right. Put it over here. Yeah, Sheriff. You just better? Yeah. While you're doing it, you might notice that the express company seal is still intact. Well, it's empty. Just as I figured. Funny part about it, Sheriff, there never was any money in that box. Lucas made away with it before it was ever put into the wagon. Then he staged the hold up to cover up. Incidentally, Goss, this is the man that shot you in the back, not Weston. Well, I'll be... For a while, I figured you did it. I even thought Ferguson had a hand in it. That's why I wanted to compare the bullet that hit Weston with the one from your gun, Ferguson. Obviously, the comparison was never made, because we just found the bullets on Lucas. I guess he opened the package and substituted his own sample. You can't prove anything with those slugs. You mind letting me take a look at those bullets, Rogers? Don't anybody move.
will have a gay time, a holiday time. It will be play time for everyone. Encore will follow encore. The people on shore will miss the fun. So when you are gone, I'm gonna be gone, honey. Yellow rose of Texas is beyond 